In this demonstration, we're going to talk about concrete beam design in the concrete bending software. Concrete bending follows the provisions of the ACI 318, so all of the things we'll talk about today are relative to those provisions. Here we have a simple slab that's more or less L-shaped, and it's supported by beams along column line 1, 2, and 4 over on this edge. So we have basically three beam lines. Currently the beams are set to be 8 by 10 inches and the 10 inches is the drop below the slab and these other two column lines we have beams that are 10 by 12 with a 12 inch drop. If we take a look at this analysis results we'll see the overall behavior of this structure. We have fairly heavy live load so the demands are significant for this slab. Currently, you see we have primarily slab bending in the X direction with some negative moment around this interior beam. And we'd expect the demands on this interior beam line to be the highest of the three. So how do we deal with beam design in concrete bending? To do that, we're going to go to the design results view and look at what's presented there. Also, I'd like to point out what's shown in the project status panel. And if we take a look at the design, it's been done, but there's a a caution flag on the design done that at least one unity check has failed. If we look below that, we see we have a section called plate checks, which we've talked about in another demonstration. And we also have several checks below the beam checks area. We have one for flexure, for beam shear, one for torsion in these beams, one for minimum flexural steel, one for transverse minimum steel, and that deals with the stirrups. And lastly, we have some issues with the steel spacing. And notice it's red. We have a unity check issue, which we'll talk about. So how do we deal with the beam results in this view? To do that, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the design filter. And I'm going to turn off the plates and make sure the beams are showing. So now we see our three beam lines. And notice that the two outer beam lines, the unity values, are less than one, so they're not red. And in fact, when we look at the flyby information, which I've turned on, we just hover over the beam lines to see what's going on. And see, we have unity values greater than one in the center line. And over here, again, they're less than one. So the values I've chosen appear to be fine, except for the interior column line or beam line. Let's click on one of the beams in that line and take a look at the Modify tab that's selected over here in the Project Manager. When we go down the Modify tab, we see we have a section for top reinforcing, bottom reinforcing, side rebar, and shear reinforcement, and then cover values. And you can see all the values I've entered that are currently used in the calculations for the beams. For the top reinforcing, currently I'm using two number sevens continuous on the top. And for the bottom, I'm using two number sevens continuous. So those are my main bars in the pattern. I have a couple of side bars on each side that are number four bars that go between the top and the bottom bars to help us for torsional capacity. And lastly, for shear reinforcement, I'm using number four bars. And for this particular beam, I have number four bars spaced at four inches on center for the left side and I have number four bars at six inches on center in the center third of the beam. If we want to figure out what's happening, one way to do that is to just double click on the status and that will take us to the text reports view and provide a report for us. So when we do that, we see we get this report and it's telling us that we have a unity value of almost one and it's telling us the issue is regarding the steel spacing provided at 4 inches and a required st steel spacing at 3.6 inches and more information about the demands and the location. It's on the left location. The stirrups currently are the number 4. So it looks like we need to improve on that 4 inch spacing. So I'm going to go back to the design results now and select both of these members in the center and hold down the control key. Then I'm going to go over to the inspector and change our shear reinforcement for the, from the 4-inch spacings. I'm going to reduce that down to a 3-inch spacing. And 3.5 would work probably as well because that report just showed us the demand was 3.6. Once I've done that, 
We now see that we had a message saying that the shear design was not available, so we had to wait until that went away. Once we did that, we see we still have unity checks excessive here and still 1.1, so not much has changed. Well, what's going on? Well, let's go back to this report again by clicking over here in the project status and take a look at what it's saying. And now it's saying that the center region requires a spacing of five and a half inches and we've got a spacing of six leading to the unity value problem. So going back to design results, I'm going to select these two beams again, go into the inspector and I'm going to change the center spacing from six inches down to five inches. And again, we get the, res the message that design is not available. So we have to wait. Now that design is done, we can see that our center beam now has a unity value of 0.9 and we met all the design checks. And if we look over in the project status, we can see that there are no red entries in the beam design. So that's a quick demonstration of how you deal with beam design in concrete bending.